What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 99 and we start today's episode off with some player training and a big bid here for Marc Roca, our Spanish holding midfielder is wanted by Paris Saint-Germain. The French Giants put in a bid of £40.8 million for our holding midfielder. 27 years old, 86 rated. That bid is under his current market valuation by about a couple million, 1.7 mil, I think it is. And Rocker this season, he, he's been a sort of player that does the dirty work, you know. Doesn't really get involved in the offensive style of things. He's only got one assist in 16 games in the Serie A. None in the Champions League and no goals scored all season long. But he's not a type of player that scores goals in this team. He just breaks up attacks, does the dirty work, offloads the ball on as soon as he wins it back. And that's all he needs to do in this team. 86 rated, 27 years old. But I thought I'll at least negotiate with Paris Saint-Germain see what they could possibly put in for our Spanish holding midfielder but I certainly wasn't going to sell him for under his valuation because I like his role in this team as one of the sort of the unsung heroes if you will but after negotiating with Paris Saint-Germain I wanted 50 million they said no 46.4 mil but I said if you give us 48 and a half million pounds that's 6 mil over his current market valuation you can have him and PSG said yeah 48.5 mil for Marc Rocca and he might be on his way to the part of the France. And he's, he's been a very solid player for us this season. Very consistent all throughout the course of our first season here with Roma. But if we do sell him, there'll be some options to replace him on the shortlist. So I must admit, I'm probably more leaning towards right now. So this might well be Mark Rocker's final game for the club. First and only game on today's episode, and it's a big one. We take on AC Milan away at the San Siro in a third versus fourth clash. We have been neck and neck all throughout the course of the season so far and if we can come to the San Siro and win tonight against Milan we will leapfrog these boys move into third place and perhaps cut the gap at Juventus at the top of the table as well so huge game for both teams tonight third versus fourth nobody can afford to lose as that might spell the end for their title dreams only game today Milan away at the San Siro as we go in search of a third place finish come the end of January to Shaw and Oli in towards Cellini nice ball through to Mandragora and I see Moise Keen there oh no 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 why did, why did it go to uh, the auto oh, switch from Mandragora Keen could have ran onto that and it auto switched to the wrong man yeah, golden chance there and it say didn't work out the way we were hoping for but here's Mandragora on the ball through to Tony now we'll find Mandragora back to Ivan great save by Donnarumma and Keen shot also saved Rocker turning in at the far post is tackled. I'm appealing for a penalty on the sidelines. I think half-hearted, really. Don't think that was a spot game, but keen strike through the legs of Kurt Zuma. Brilliantly saved by Donnarumma. Fantastic double stop by the number 99. And Milan still tied at 0-0. Cleared a corner as well. Juve have just equalised away at Cagliari as Orsolini finds Shaw down left-hand side. Conti to beat, and he's beating him well. Great touch by Oli Shaw. Now, can he cross? Or can he go alone? No. Oh, God. <laughs> he's, just, he's just not a goal scorer. He's just not a goal scorer. I don't think he's ever... I tell you what, here's a question for you guys in today's comment section. What's more likely to happen first? Oli Shaw getting a goal or me scoring a free kick? Still nil-nil as Tony has tackled. Should have just crossed it there, but crosses just don't work for me in this year's FIFA. He's just... <laughs> poor old Oli Shaw. He just... He'll never score. He's not a goal scorer. He's too nice. Or, no, no, oh, Donnarumma, what a first half from Donnarumma, Oli Shaw beats his man, finds space, but oh, it'll be me scoring a free kick, no way will Shaw ever score a goal, god, just imagine Oli Shaw getting his first goal in this game directly after I said that, that would have been typical. As, as Conti sends it along, but Ferro is there. He has been absolutely immense this season. And uh, I must say, Shaw has had a very good first star for He's looking very aggressive out there, Oli Shaw, and I like this a lot. Constantly going forward and getting involved in the build-ups. Or oh, Cellini to Keane. Oh, and a brilliant defensive header by Kurt Zuma as Tony was waiting to get on the end of it. But the Roma fans are in really good voice here. Only one win in our last three Serie A games, but tonight here away at the San Siro, we've been very good. Doesn't change the fact we're still tied at 0-0 though. But there is a great chance because I've just seen Keane arrive. We get the far post. It's Moise Keane for his second. Only two games! Dear long 
broken right before the break. And number seven with goal number eight, Milan nil, Roma one. And after all the fantastic football in the first 45 minutes, we finally drawn first blood. Brilliant little passing move. Keen on the end of it. And Donnarumma, after a sensational first 45 minutes, is finally beaten. The former Levante, Everton and Juventus striker gives the visitors the lead. Milan nil, Roma one. And actually, I might be wrong about the amount of goals Keane has scored this season. I'm trying to think of how many Champions League goals he's got. Because that's his sixth goal in the Serie A this season. I think he's got two in Europe. I don't know. But he's got one tonight. That's the most important one of the season thus far. As Moise Keane has fired us into a lead heading into the dressing room. 45 minutes to go. And we're one half away of breaking into the top three. And Milan had a dreadful first half. They'll need to pick it up in the second. They've started off strong here. As Romagnoli is forced out of position. They need a goal, really. Uh, an early goal, or at least an early chance. There's many crosses. And, oh, right on cue, Paolo Lopez had to be alert to that volley. They'll be coming in this second half. There's no way they'll lie down and accept this 1-0 defeat. We'll have to be very good defensively. And, oh, please be clinical when going forward. Moise Keane! Oh, Donnarum with a save. And pounce on the rebound. Oh, what a start to the second half that would have been. Still leading by a goal into the final eight minutes of football here. There's not been that many chances in the second half after a really good first half. But I won't mind one bit if we can see out these three points and get the 1-0 win. It will take us into third. Ferro does enough. We'll get it away defensively tonight. We have been absolutely brilliant here. As Orsolini finds Tony. Nice little 1-2 between a pair. And tackled by Brooks and Milan clear. This is it, final chance for Milan in the final minute of normal time. It's Haaland down the left-hand side. Benjamin Mendy into the hood. Back to Benjamin Mendy, who's found a bit of space to shoot. Oh, Paolo Lopez, what a save. What a save by our number one. Unfortunately, it fell to the wrong man, the chance really, but at least Mendy got it on target and almost scored. You see as Joel Linton gets replaced there, hands on his head. He knows that might have been the final chance. Corner swung in. Lopez not exactly convincing. Mandragora clears though, and that should surely be that. Or Cellini flicks on, and there is the final whistle. Milan nil, Roma one, and we come to the San Siro and get the victory that puts us into the top three. Moise Keane's only goal of the game means that we head back to Rome, back in the top three, and perhaps cut the gap at the top of the table. What a victory! I really felt as though we deserved this win as well. In the first half, we were superb. And really, at the break, we should have been two or three goals up. Had it not been for Donnarumma, we probably would have been. But in the end, it's our defence once again that ensures we do get the three points. Moise Keane's my man in the match, but I have to give a lot of credit to Rolando Mandragori got the assist on Mark Rocker tonight. They were so good at breaking up attacks, and that might well have been Mark's final game for the club as well. Well, tonight, we might see why we'll miss him sorely in the second half of the season. But 1-0 to final score, and Juve 1-3-1. They were drawing at the break, god damn it. But a 3-1 victory as we enter transfer deadline day does mean that the gap does remain at 7. However, we are now in the top 3 as we leapfrog Milan. Oh, what a win. So a huge win for Roma. We leapfrog Milan and head in to the top three as we enter February. And just before we get there, on the back of that superb victory at the San Siro, we see a couple of hours into transfer deadline day that Marc Rocca has agreed personal terms with Paris Saint-Germain and is off to the Parc de Prince. So farewell to our Spanish holding midfielder. £48.5 million was the fee agreed for the 27-year-old. As you see a bit here for Cristante as well. This came from Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. They bought Coutrone off us in the summer trance window on deadline day. Now they wanted Cristante, but we decided to reject it. He's 28 years old, 82 rated, but as a backup holding midfielder, I really like him. But with Rocha going, I must say I really liked him this season. Only the one assist, of course, in 18 Serie A games, but did the dirty work for us really, really well as a holding midfielder in this team. But that did give us around £40 million to play with on transfer deadline day. And as I discussed it briefly at the start of the episode, there 
there were three targets on my shortlist that I would love to replace him with. Those are Nicolo Barella of Inter Milan, Getson Fernandez of Benfica, and Lorenzo Pellegrini, of course, once of Roma, who many of you guys have been saying you need to get him back to the Stadio Olimpico. Pellegrini seemed like the best player when going forward, so not exactly what we were looking for. Barella looked like the best defender out of the three, but unfortunately, a little bit out of our price range this window, which is a shame as well, because he would have been an amazing player to replace Mark Rocha with, a rating uh, higher and uh, the better player all round. But Geto Fernandez seemed, speaking of all round, like the more complete all round player. Physically, a really good athlete, strong, quick, and high stamina. 96 stamina as well, with high, high work rate and a good passer of the ball as well, with really good mental stats, with 84 interceptions and 83 composure as well. He just seemed like the ideal replacement for our Spanish holding midfielder. And the chief exec suggested we could get him for around his valuation. In the end, we got him for under it. He was valued at £37 million. Pounds. Benfica accepted our initial bid of £35 million plus a 15% sell-on clause, probably due to the fact his contract is due to expire in a year and a half. So Benfica cash in on Fernandez. We offer him a contract of £70,000 a week and a 250 grand sign-on bonus on a five-year deal with the important squad role and no release clause. And as you'll see on transfer deadline day, Gedson Fernandez is in to replace Mark Rocker. So he is a rating lower than the Spaniard, but a much better athlete than Rocco was. He's also got the high attacking work rate, so can offer something when going forward that the Spaniard couldn't. And I'm really happy he's in as well, because he's two years younger too. I'd imagine he'll probably end up with the same potential, but I just prefer his key stats to Mark Rocco. And his best stat being 96 stamina with high, high work rate. This guy is a complete engine. He's got three lungs, I'm sure. And I think he's a complete player as well, a box to box midfielder. Mandragora can do the defensive job that Mark could do as well. So Mandragora can now sit deeper, give Gedson free reign to go forward and join in on the offensive end as well. I'm sure he'll have a lot more direct contributions to the goal than Mark Rocha did. And I think he's just a better player, even though he is one rating lower as well, being two years younger too. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. He was cheaper by about 12 million as well. And I must say, I'm really happy with that deal. Obviously, Pellegrini could have been good, but he's more just an attacking player, not really good when defending. We need someone that can defend as well as go forward and attack as well. But Rayla was my first choice, but out of our price range, unfortunately. But to bring in Gedson Fernandez to replace Mark Rocha, I'm I'm very happy with that. A huge signing and sale on transfer deadline day. But I like the business we did. We did reject a bit for Fossi Mensah as well. He's staying here as a backup right back. And sadly, we just didn't have enough money to pick up Antonino Barai, the uh, Empoli striker, who will be facing next at the Stadio Olimpico, the six foot six man who bagged a brace against us when we took him on away from home at the start of the season. Unfortunately, just a little bit too much for us on deadline day after the signing of Fernandez, but I don't mind too much a potential signing for the summer but for the for the window only one piece of business done it happened on deadline day sorry two pieces of business done and it happened on deadline day one big sale one big signing Mark Rocker out gets and Fernandez in and I've got to say I'm very very pleased with that little replacement there I didn't plan for this on Jan only January transfer window but I'm pretty pleased with the fact it has happened because I believe Fernandez will be a better all-round player and give us something to off win going forward because we need to score more goals 22 games into season. Yes, we're into the top three now, but still seven points beyond the league leaders Juventus. Whilst we do have the best defensive record this season, only 32 goals scored all season long. We need more goals. Hopefully, Fernandez can provide us with that. But that was today's episode of Career Mode, guys. So a big thank you for joining. Hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. And don't forget, the next episode will be the special episode 100. We've got five big games coming in it, and I really hope you enjoy it. A couple of big lives ones. The first leg against Juventus in the Coppa Nationale semi-final and the first leg against Manchester City in the round of 16 in the Champions League 2. Have a fantastic day guys, much love to you all and I'll see you for the special episode number 100 very soon.